Alright guys, you know I'm a big fan of Nintendo. Recently bought a Switch, so... Hey, Mr. Who's the Boss, we were just talking about him, by the way. He, he just uploaded a new video called... Nintendo's 43 Biggest Secrets. Don't know why I picked the number 43, but hey. He does have some cool videos, cool editing. Let's check it out and react to it, guys. We're starting at the zero second mark, 5432. Nintendo has been around since 1818. You know what I mean? Visuals and stuff, guys. It's something, uh, you know, us regular YouTubers can't really do. I don't know if that's your specialty, but... Probably took him like an hour just to edit this first few frames here, man. Like, maybe not that long, but you, you get the point. Like, literally, the time of the Ottoman Empire. That they have <laughs> Accessory that's a one to one of a revolver, or that until Mario came along, Nintendo's mascot was meant to be Disco. He appeared on the manuals for lots of early games in Japan, but as soon as Nintendo saw people's reaction to Mario, he was very quickly buried, but has shown up in a lot of places as an Easter egg, including the surprisingly awesome Mario Bros. movie. You think you know Nintendo? And I still need to see that movie, guys. I still need to go see that movie, bro. Guys, have you seen the Mario movie? Let me know in the comments below. Let me know how it was. Keep watching. Right? You think they're just this normal gaming company who made a couple of consoles? Well, here are 40 more things that you didn't know that will completely... What? That image right we already got through three? Oh my goodness, bro. I just... The time's been going so quickly, I didn't even notice. Right around. So what was Nintendo doing all the way back in 1889? I mean, they weren't making Mario. Creating card company, guys. I actually know this one. Oh, that's for sure. This company actually started out making Hanafuda cards in Japan, which became really popular really quickly because the government had recently outlawed most forms of gambling, but Nintendo's Hanafuda managed to loophole their way around that. And so, if you ever wondered what Nintendo actually means, it can either be translated to leave luck to heaven, a reference to gambling, or the more literal temple of free Hanafuda. Free emphasizing the fact that Nintendo's Hanafuda were allowed. I didn't even know there was a translation, guys. What? There's a translation for it, wow. Out and not outlawed. But after a few years of this, something crazy happened. The president of Nintendo at the time, while visiting one of the company's Hanafuda factories, Yeah, back. Alright, I'm back. Greece spotted this extending arm-like toy. It had been made by one of the main- Was it gonna be like Nintendo label related? Related, sorry. Engineers, Gunpei Yokoi, just for a bit of fun. But the president loved it. And sensing that Nintendo was starting to reach their limits when it comes to playing cards, he ordered Yokoi to actually develop this toy into a real Nintendo product, just in time for the Christmas run. Yeah, bro, never heard of this, man. So he did, and it ended up being called the Ultra Hand. Thus, basically... <laughs> <laughs> Looks like some 3D printed kind of deal that you just do, just because you have a 3D printer. Nowadays, guys, like, who would even use that thing? It's cool for, like, you know, basic uses, like, high shelves or something, but... Overnight, pivoting Nintendo from a card company to a toy company. And this guy, Gunpei, from a regular maintenance guy to basically chief inventor. That turned out to be a pretty good decision, since he's the man who, later down the line, ended up creating Nintendo's first ever handheld game console. The Game & Watch, the even more iconic Game Boy, and he's also the one who's responsible for basically the entire way that Nintendo operates. You know how people always complain that compared to PlayStation and Xbox, Nintendo is consistently behind in terms of tech, that they never use the latest components? Well, this was Gunpei Yokoi's entire design philosophy that he called lateral thinking with withered technology. The idea that people don't need cutting edge tech to have fun, it just requires the company to do some out the box thinking. And if you can do that, you can have the same levels of success with far less cost. And now you're looking for- Okay, okay. I apologize if I've ruined Nintendo for you, but you will see- No, you didn't ruin it. We're good. We're good traces of this vision across every one of their products. This is why Nintendo's first Game & Watch used the same no. fixed image display. That's actually the image they use in, um... The Smash series, guys. The exact image, what? First Game & Watch used the same fixed image... And that one, wow! ...image display as a calculator. And why today's Nintendo Switch released with a chipset that was two years old, even when it launched. Am I happy about it? Yikes! Not really. Is the Switch still my most played current console by far? Yes, it is. Same here, guys. <laughs> hey, they go to they got a good GPU. That's a that's a part. But you know, the CPU. If you're like on the DLC, you're like stuff loads slow, man. We're, we're we're waiting for the next gen, bro. But 
Maybe 2025 will get it. So releasing stuff for the Switch in 2024, guys. Summer 2024 will still get Switch games, according to the last Nintendo Direct. This guy Yokoi was such a big part of Nintendo's success over the years that Nintendo later decided to honor his contributions with a real video game titled Grill Off with Ultra Hand. And Ultra Hand wasn't the only toy Nintendo ended up making. Seeing the success of LEGO in the late 1960s, who just introduced the concept of a wheel, which changed the entire paradigm of what was possible, Nintendo started to think, yeah we can do that too. And very shortly pivoted their efforts towards building their own Lego-like NB building blocks. They had ads directly comparing their blocks to Lego to show how their revolutionary circular design was more appealing. And, and Lego sued them. Understandably. What? Nintendo actually won that lawsuit, but only later realized, thanks to their very peed off customers, that actually the pieces all being so rounded made them work together much less well than Lego. It wasn't until 1977 that Nintendo- That's what I was gonna say as well, man. How's it gonna work better with rounded parts, man? How are you gonna build stuff? Going against Lego is gonna be pretty hard, man. They got like a straight up monopoly on it. Nintendo's true trajectory was set when they released the Color TV game, their first ever video game console, with each version of the console only able to play one single game. Imagine that nowadays, Sony releases the PS6, says you can only play Gollum on it. Right, so that's basically Nintendo's history, time for some surprising durability facts. I really hope we caught that. The Nintendo DS is the only console to have survived a trip all the way up to the top of Mount Everest. <laughs> the moisture, the icy cold temperatures, the wind, the spilled curry apparently. Even when all other professional- What does spilled curry have to do with it, guys? Guys. What if somebody took a switch out there? I'm sure it would survive. You know what I mean? All electronic equipment. They're in a- they're in a tent that's warm, it's- <laughs> the climbers were carrying failed. This is what lived on. During the Gulf War in 1990, a medic had left his Game Boy in a tent, and that tent got bombed. Now, naturally, you'd assume any possession of yours that gets bombed is a write-off. You'd throw it away. But just for what seemed like a bit of a sick joke, this medic decided to send his melted Game Boy in for repair when he got back. But then, hey. the Nintendo repair staff, when they received this fry Game Boy and stuck a game of Tetris in just to try and see if it was even repairable, found that it wasn't just repair but it actually still worked. But it gets crazier because the Game Boy was also the first console- I was still on display and working, guys? What? What? Oh, ever to be taken to space. In 1993, Russian cosmonaut Alexander Serebrov spent an astonishing 196 days in the Russian space station with the handheld and a copy of Tetris. So, Remind him what gravity feels like? Like all cosmonauts, I love sports. My particular favorites are Osmonaut. football and swimming. During flight, in rare minutes of leisure, I enjoy playing Game Boy. Wrote Serebrov in an autographed note that accompanied the game and his Game Boy in a 2011 auction. So yeah, if- Yeah, bro. There's one brand of consoles that you could confidently- Imagine you're so famous, you get to sell stuff you sign for like 10 times the price you bought it. Take to war with you? It's Hey, it could happen with me, right? Could happen with me. Nintendo, but what about the weirdness of Nintendo's characters? Like how Mario, in the original Donkey Kong arcade where he first appeared, wasn't meant to be Mario. Nintendo actually wanted to use Popeye as the main protagonist, but just couldn't get the licensing rights. And it's only then that- Hey, bro. Popeye, guys. Popeye. Imagine it was Popeye instead of the Mario, man. They realized that they actually need a character of their own, so they decided to create Jumpman. Yeah, I think the creative team were having a day off. But Jumpman, over the coming years, became Mario. And Mario as a character now has managed to sell Nintendo over 800 million video games. Did you ever wonder why Mario's gorilla nemesis is called Donkey Kong? Well, Donkey in a Japanese to English dictionary is an adjective meaning stubborn. And Nintendo wanted to make it immediately obvious to passers-by at arcades that the enemy character is a stubborn ape. Zelda is named after the famous novelist and playwright Zelda Fitzgerald. For some reason. I think they just liked her name. But then where does Link's name come from? It's not short for Lincoln. Well, the very <laughs> first Zelda game was originally- Like a Link cable or something, guys? Who knows? Who knows? You know, this video reminds me of like those one hour facts videos, man. Very, very similar. Very similar style here. But hey, you know?
uh, repeat videos are, are are not good guaranteed to be a thing i mean come on now first of all it's mr who's a boss i don't know what to say here guys going to feature time travel with link being the literal link i'm sure like all every single point has been covered uh, but in, a, in a similar video that's longer is what i'm saying between past and future they of course did go on to use this concept in later zelda games but a lot of people didn't know that this was the intention right from the very beginning if you look at kirby game box art in japan versus the us You'll notice his face is angrier in the US and cuter in Japan. And this uh, is intentional. Nintendo found from What? Angrier. Their market research that all demographics in Japan responded well to cuteness, but that in the US, they felt like they needed Kirby to be cool more than cute because they didn't think that boys would play otherwise. Which is hilarious since Kirby was very nearly going to be called Tinkle Popo. <laughs> I don't think that would have been quite the same hit. One of Nintendo's top lawyers. Yeah, we get we like the one word names, man. Lawyers, John Kirby, owns the exclusive worldwide right to name sailboats Donkey Kong as a What? Why though? Why? <laughs> a very wow. strange thank you gift for winning Nintendo a massive lawsuit. This was a huge case, by the way, funnily enough, from Universal, who tried to sue them saying that Donkey Kong was fringing on the rights of King Kong. Oh, and they also bought him a $30,000 boat for him to name the Donkey Kong. But that's less funny than this idea of a God-given right of you, and only you can name your boat Donkey Kong. Come <laughs> on now. 30, 30k they're spending here, guys. Funny. But then also, notice something interesting about that guy's name, John Kirby. So the reason that Kirby didn't end up being called Tinkle Popo was this guy right here, Unsung Hero. Right, just before we get to the Easter eggs, which, not gonna lie, is my absolute favorite thing, I wanna show you how, even though Nintendo does tend to stick to less cutting edge tech in their machines, that it's also impossible to deny how much they've innovated in their own way. They were the first to bring in the concept of a D-pad or directional pad, funnily enough, also engineered by our guy Gunpei. The same for the analog stick, which appeared on the N64 in 1996 before- And, and this thing's totally, like, uh, obsolete now. Or Sony or Sega could beat them to the punch. They made- but hey, it's a cool design. I'm not going to say it didn't work. But, you know, they, they, they're not putting it on their the new devices, guys. You know what I mean? Instream the ability to save game progress on cartridges in the West. Instead of having to use floppy drives, they basically installed tiny batteries into the cartridges, which basically keep the game running in a really low power... That's not a small battery, guys. I thought it would be like a little chip, bro. But I guess we're not that advanced in our battery making. Batteries are pretty large. Part of the phone and stuff. ...state when taken out, which is needed so that it doesn't reset to its original state without progress. These cartridge batteries have lasted 20, 30 years, with grown adults even now carrying on their childhood save files. Nintendo made the first shoulder buttons, appearing on the Super Nintendo Entertainment System at a time where developers were scratching their heads thinking, what on earth do we do with all of these inputs? Which is funny because nowadays we have two times that. Nintendo introduced Controller Rumble in 1997 with the Rumble Pack for your N64 controllers. Again, at a time where the idea of a controller that could vibrate interactively with what was happening in a game felt like a whole new unexplored dimension. So many big gaming features that we nowadays just take for granted, Nintendo were the ones who either invented them or popularized them. And then there was the Virtual Boy, the first ever mass-produced virtual reality system, which is uh, which is a failed, it failed, guys. Crazy, considering that this is 1995 we're talking about, the year that I was born, but this was also a pretty good example. I was actually born sooner than him, man of why you shouldn't always rush to be first. The Virtual Boy was VR, but long before VR was good enough to make the tech usable. It could only display images in black and red, which ended up- VR is still kind of un unusable today, guys. Very clunky thing to have. But hey, Apple's got like some VR tech coming soon, which might be better. Giving people headaches, it launched with no good games because Nintendo was too busy prepping for the N64 that they knew would be a hit. And the main problem was that while initially conceived as a lightweight set of goggles that you could wear and take anywhere, the Virtual Boy ended up being so heavy that Nintendo had to build and ship a custom stand with it that required you to use it on a table and lean into it. Make research that all and tanking Nintendo's entire stock value, this guy outright overlord status of the previous president. Mario and the Legend of Zelda. Okay, man, I'm sorry, I rewinded. But into it, making it a very literal pain in the neck. 
So we've talked a fair bit about the inventor, Gunpei Yokoi, but he isn't the only weirdly well-known Nintendo executive. Because compared to other companies like Sony and Microsoft, who tend to keep one or two public-facing figures, Nintendo likes to put their developers at the front and center, to the point where they become almost as beloved as the company's actual character. I know, right? Everybody's talking about Sakurai. Like, you know what I mean? They're, they're like celebrities, bro. Like Shigeru Miyamoto, the creator of the Super Mario and the Legend of Zelda games basically the architect of a lot of people's childhoods. What I thought was so cool is that he created the original Zelda on NES as arguably the first open world game because he wanted to give players the same feeling he had as a kid, exploring outdoors in his hometown. Hey, it does achieve it, it does achieve it guys, not gonna lie. Especially the feeling of discovering a cave, i.e. the very first thing you do in the game to get your sword. Or like the current president of Nintendo of America, whose name is literally Doug Bowser. That's the fact. And fun as that is, even he has not yet lived up to the Yeah, I did not know. Legendary meme overlord status of the previous president of Nintendo America. Reg oh yeah. What happened to him, man? Legit, bro. This guy was all over 4chan. I used to look at it a lot and you know, everybody's been talk everybody talked about him, man. He fills Amy. What? I think it's actually pronounced Reggie Fisa Me, but I prefer my version. So does Amy. <laughs> oh, no who came in hard with his very first introduction to the fans at E3 2004. And it's not just this, Reggie has had a million other golden moments, like My body is ready. Which then became My body is Reggie. And then him actually adopting the fan nickname of The Reginator. And then there's Satoru Iwata, who was the president of the entire company from 2002 until his tragic passing in 20... Rest in peace, man. 15. There are a million stories you could tell- uh, Guys, I don't even know how he passed away, how he passed away but rest in peace. About Iwata. Like the fact that when the Wii U was failing and tanking Nintendo's entire stock value, this guy outright refused to fire any employees and instead cut his own salary in half. Or that he's the reason that the second generation of Pokemon games feature both the region from the second game and Totally forgot how you can fly around like that, that's cool. The entire first game bundled into one. The dev team was struggling already just to fit in one region, but Iwata was so insistent that he wanted to give the fans more that he single-handedly developed a compression tool so powerful that it not only saved the game's entire development, but allowed them to stuff almost another full game in there too. And if you're enjoying this video, then a sub to the channel would be... Nintendo dopamine inducing. <laughs> So, at launch, the Switch had a hidden easter egg left in there by developers in memory of Iwata, a ROM of NES Golf, the first game he worked on at Nintendo. Is, whenever I see NES Golf, is that like Mario's dad or something? Like Nintendo, which would only appear when you performed his signature directly to you gesture with both Joy-Cons, which he would do at the start of every Nintendo Direct presentation. Speaking what? of NES Golf... What? Can I do that with my Switch and play it? and easter eggs. No one seems to know this, but the golf course in Wii Sports, enjoyed by tens of millions, is actually the exact same course layout first created in NES Golf in 1987, but just now yeah, in 3D, which is both really cool to see the original like history or pizza so kind of deal, man. Original ideas brought to life, and also one really smart way to save yourself drawing out new courses. They also then reuse those same courses for Clubhouse games on the Switch. The GameCube launch jingle has two secret alternatives. So this is what the normal one sounds like. But if you hold Z on your controller, it makes Z, bro. Why is it not? Why not say Z, bro? And by the way, guys, it must be his country a uh, country difference, but. Yeah, that, that's a well-known fact, guys. A squeaky dog sound. I, I can make a video talking about the facts. And then, if you plug in all four controllers and hold Z on all of them, it turns into a traditional Japanese drum theme to honor what? the console's country of origin. Okay, I did not know that. That's cool. And then, as an homage to the GameCube, when you have to press the same button three times to launch your current Nintendo Switch, I imagine most people just mash the A button, but... Guys, he's gonna talk about the different... Sounds you can make with different buttons. But if you press either ZR or ZL, or click in the sticks, it'll make similarly unusual sounds. If you boot up a DS on your birthday, the boot jingle will be more sparkly. On Wii U, <laughs> your knees will sit there and applaud you. Also, Nintendo pick. Yeah, guys, I was waiting for my birthday to happen to see if anything cool is gonna happen because it asked for my birthday, right? And uh, it wasn't that. To chat will display a happy birthday message when you join a room. Oh, this is so cool. On the DS Guys, I've literally never been in Picto chat with anyone but myself, guys. I, I'm an only child. It was so depressing. <laughs>
Size sound editor. If you record any sound and leave it idle for a minute, the console will remix that sound into the Super Mario Bros. theme. If you transfer what? your data from the Wii to the Wii U, the data will actually be carried by Pikmin, which are iconic Nintendo characters at this point. They put way more effort into this animation than they really needed to, and I am all for it. The GameCube has a microscopic dolphin printed on one of its chips, referencing the fact that Dolphin was the console's code name during development. And if you've ever wondered, this is how the Dolphin emulator that lets you play Nintendo games on other machines found its name. And another physical hidden easter egg which didn't think it would mention emulators which has got to be my favorite since a lot of you can go and find this right now. If you tilt your Switch Pro controller's right stick down, shine a I also learned about that when checking my authenticity torch at the top of it you can just about see thanks to all game fans printed on the circuit board. Guys just don't buy a third party controller like me. Save it for a real, real one. I always like oh hey Zani Commenting again, guys. Tezani commenting. All right, guys, like, comment, subscribe, check out the original video. Thank you for watching, fam. See you guys next one. Um, been watching you for ages. Is one of my favorite series. Let me know what you think about it. I knew, uh, like, I knew a good chunk of the facts, but then, then again, I've been like studying them for so long. So, last year, like, just been studying it. Later, guys.